Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. It's Floral Friday! So we're gonna do this quick, easy, loose floral today. I'm um, gonna to use some of the brushes that I showed in my last tutorial, which is my eight favorite brushes. Minus one that I forgot, but you'll see it in this video. So please check it out. Okay, so let's get started. I have a bunch of brushes here. I have just a simple uh, tray palette today. I mix some of my Lizard and Crimson with some yellow to get this orangey peachy color. I've got my medium yellow, hocus green mixed with black, some burnt umber, some violet mixed with Lizard with Crimson, bleh, crimson, hocus green and sap green, and this is a uh, Lizard and Crimson. Uh, it's going to be a pretty simple palette. So let's get started on Floral Friday. So I'm taking some of this yellow and putting it on my Filbert brush. Remember I had a tutorial yesterday with my various brushes and I'll be using some of them today. So please go check out that video. It's my eight top brushes. And we're gonna start by just doing the interior of the flower, little lines. I'll have to blow this up. Just little dash lines like so, going around, leaving a space in the middle and not going all the way around the circle. I'm gonna add that green you saw, which is a little sap green. And then for the actual petal, I have a bunch, I have another brush I forgot to mention in my video that I used to use a lot. <clears throat> it's a, another oval brush not as pointy as the Neptune Princeton one. This is a Sapphire Robert Simmons brush. See how it's rounded? It's kind of very worn though. When it wasn't worn, it can make a nice skinny point, but it's still doable. So I'm gonna go back and grab this paint. I'm gonna water this down even more. I want it very pale. Gonna paint some petals. You're gonna paint the Hit the top of the brush, pull it in, like so. And I'm kind of slanting it. I'm curving it, see my hand movement? And then the opposite way. But as you curve in, I make these nice petals. This really nice, pretty peachy pale color. I'm not going to go around the whole circle. Going to leave a little space, but you can still see how I'm leaning on the side like that. You can still see how you can get pretty fairly pointed if you wanted to. You can go back in and grab this paint where it's not as loose with the water so it's a little concentrated just hit the end with the tip of the brush like this just dabbing it still using the same brush gives it a nice effect blow it in so you can see see so i'm going to blow out and do the same thing again around here Gonna do those lines. Maybe a little green. Take the other brush. So I tend to do sometimes the flowers first. I'm gonna pull back out. Okay, I'm gonna do something over here. We're gonna add different colors to the peach. Let's see how this works. I'm gonna do different flower too. We're just gonna use the brush, folding it in like this. You can 
go over here and grab this kind of violet pink. Just touch it on this one. I can bleed in. The same brush, I'm going to grab my green. Now I mixed the green up. It was limey, but now I put some of that violet in there and it made it more brown. I can clean up my brush and grab that green. I'm going to grab the sap green. This is a Cotman sap green, Winsor Newton. Get that fairly loose. We're going to make some leaves. See, I'm just touching it on the on the edge, holding like a pencil, and then pushing down, and pulling back. Look at that. Has a great effect. It's still looking too monotone, so I'm going to go and grab this darker hooker's green. Go in there. Just get in there. Crisscross it. And out here. Clean your brush. Grab that lighter green. You're giving it movement. You see that? Looks like it's moving. Same brush. I know I should have put this in the tutorial, but grabbing that violet pink over here. See, I mix the two. It's like a violet pink. And you're just going to push down, pull up, push down, pull up. And you get those simple petals. I'm going to make it lighter. I took some of the paint off. So let's grab one of those brushes that I had in tutorial. The uh, Neptune, see that? Really pointy. You could do the same thing with this brush here, but the petals won't look rounded with this one because it's got that point. If you wanted a pointy one. So I'm grabbing some of that pink mixed with the purple. Going back over here to this flower, using that point. Now that it's dry. Oh, excuse me. Trying to grab that paint. There we go. So now you can use it to your advantage. This is not a particular flower. It could look like a peonies, but right now it's just a made up flower, really. You see that with the point? Clean that off and then go in here and do the details with the darker part of this particular paint. That blushy color. So you can make it fatter if you push down the belly of that brush. Or just keep it skinny with the tip. However you want to do it. Just giving you ideas on how to make flowers. There's no particular rhyme or reason one way or the other way. Everyone has their way of doing things. All right, the magic of editing. I had been interrupted, so I edited my video. <laughs> Back at it using the end of this brush. Okay, we're back. So here I'm just using the tip, just pulling this little, zoom in, pulling these little lines down, 
I can use the belly if I want to push down more, like that. Tip, belly. This is the Neptune half inch oval. It's very versatile. Brushes can be very expensive. So, most of these I use are synthetic. The non synthetic ones, the real hair ones, are very expensive. The Kalinsky brushes, the ones that I'm familiar with, that are non synthetic, that are great brushes, but very expensive. All right, so we're going to go back in and add some more leaves over in here. This, I added some yellow to that sap green. It has this limey, olivey kind of color. Like I said, you always want to put variety to every tone that you have. Put some little uh, leaves out this way, real dark ones. Just want a variety. It just makes your painting stand out more. So I'm going to add some more flowers over this way. This I picked up the uh, half inch roundish oval brush again. Just doing some simple marks. To indicate another flower over here. I'll do one up over here. I think I'll mix it with more crimson over here. And the brushes work differently on the different types of paper. Paper does matter. I'll tell you that right now. I was always fighting getting arches because um, it's pricey. But if you can get coupons um, for Hobby Lobby and Michaels, if you're in the States, I don't know how it works. In, other countries, you can get it fairly cheap. I used a 50% off coupon yesterday at Michael's. So instead of the pad being $27, you know, it's half that. So that's doable. Um, the Arches cotton paper will hold the pigment better. It's gonna make a difference. I will show a tutorial on the difference if you're using a Strathmore or Kansan over the Arches, uh, hot press, cold press, because it, it's huge, in my opinion. Especially if you're doing wet on wet technique, you can't even begin to try it um, with the, the Cotman, I mean the, the Canson or Strathmore. Strathmore does make an expensive um, cotton paper. I don't have it in my stores that I go to. See, I'm just playing with this brush. Pulling down, pulling up, making little lines. Just putting lines, different lines, different tones, different petals. Just play around. I'm gonna go back in and grab some of that my violet pink color fuchsia make some little flowers down here still going over in this one because I feel like I need something more so I'm putting that darker value kind of towards the middle And I think I've shown you what happens if you put the color down and then bleed the water next to it. Let's see if I can try and find an example. So I put this color down right here. Pull it up, pull it over. Clean up your brush, just get water on it alone and push it down next to it. See that? It's gonna bleed it. This one, not so much because the problem with these colors is they're not watercolors. They are 
the concentrated watercolor, so it works differently. It doesn't work the same. But if I did it with the watercolor, like these guys, because these are real watercolors, it would do it better. These things what I use every now and then, the Dr. P.H. Martin Wild Rose or other colors they have. Concentrated watercolor doesn't work the same. That stuff just stays down like glue, even on your palette. But the colors are just crazy fantastic. If you want something that's bright, you gotta go with them. Real intense color. And, and just, I don't think there's a watercolor that will be able to mimic that. So I'm adding more like a violet on top of these fuchsia type flowers. That's a little too dark, so I'm gonna take it away a little bit. I, I neglected this brush in my tutorial. I feel bad for him. Sorry, Robert Simmons, number S52. But that's how it goes. In the world of live tutorials, you forget things. Let's do a few more of these. Little bud type flowers. To get the idea, I'm going to put some more leaves out this way. giving it lots of movement by crisscrossing them, having some darker tones, some lighter tones, just dabbing it, as you can see. That's some burnt umber I put in there. I'm gonna go back to this one. I'm gonna use my Princeton Oval. Grab that more concentrated color. Do those lines like I showed you in the inside and the outside. But this is just such a fun little loose floral to play around with. It needs like a stem. And some more leaves. And then it needs some yellow on the inside. But look how simple this was to do. With just a couple of brushes, some cup, not that many colors. You have this vibrant looking, I can blow this up. It's blow, it's blowing up as I can probably do it. Vibrant looking palette. You go in and add some darker or orangier tones, deeper reds. Play around with it. Um, this was that Filbert brush. Here it is. I used this in the tutorial yesterday. A small little guy. It's the premise of the uh, Robert Simmons brush, but much smaller. So you get those mini little petals. Which are fun. Go back up in here. These guys are missing some detail. Use that brush for this. Go in there, put that detail in. By using the edge of it, the belly of it. And go back in here, you can put some deeper reds in here. Keep building that flower color until you get with the exact way you want it to look. I put some yellow in here. So all you're doing is building and building and building until you feel satisfied on the way it looks. I'm 
I'm always doing that, adding. I don't subtract as much, but I'm like always adding. temper in here can put some brown stems but there you go this is a floral Friday practice I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial today please like share and subscribe the more you share um, the more YouTube will help push my uh, videos and my channel and it really just helps me as an artist to grow and helps me want to do more of these videos if I don't see that the YouTube is pushing it it's very hard for me to take my time away from my regular job to do these and I really appreciate all the comments that you're giving me um, I love all the feedback so thank you so much have a great day <laughs>